This episode of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on May the 9th, 2016. Enjoy. Hello. Welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. First on the list, and uh, hopefully my video is going to work this week, um, is that uh, Microsoft is going to end the free Windows 10 upgrade offer on the 29th of July. That means that uh, after that time, if you have Windows 7 um, or Windows 8.1 and you want to make the upgrade, you're going to have to pay $119. Now that's the way it is for now. Why they would do that is beyond me. If they put millions and millions and millions and millions of free copies of Windows 10 out there, and now they want you to pay, I can't see that. We'll have to see what two months from now brings. But uh, for now, this is the news, July 29th. Now that's yeah, that's that may be it. Uh, now that's for the upgrade. That means that uh, um, the uh, if you upgrade Windows Seven, all of your stuff will be there as it was originally in Windows Seven. You just turn it on; it's Windows Ten, and all your stuff is exactly where you put it. The upgrade system won't work after July the 29th, according to this. So if you want Windows 10, you have to download it and install it. There are two ways to go here that I have found out. One, you get your credit card out and you give Microsoft $119 and they will give you a, a, uh, an access number that you put into the computer and it makes your copy of Windows 10 genuine. We talked about this a little while ago last month that uh, there is an alternative to that and that is to download and install Windows 10 and forget giving Microsoft $120. Just forget about it. Because what will happen is Windows 10 will work perfectly well except for one thing. You will not be able to change any of this. Okay? The, your, uh, the, the um, settings for personalization won't work. Folks, for 120 bucks, who cares? Who cares? You will get a little nag down here in the, in the lower right saying your copy of Windows may not be genuine. Who cares? Everything else works. Everything else works. Except for the fact that you cannot um, make these changes uh, for personalization. And these changes are in uh, in your settings and under personalization you will find that that will be grayed out but all of these settings you won't be able to change them. You won't be able to put wallpapers and pictures or anything like that on there. Who cares? As far as I am aware Windows 10 will just keep on happily working away like that. If you ever run into problems where it's saying, well, you're not genuine, and so we're going to cripple this system for you completely, then if you want to, if you want to keep it, give them the $120. <laughs> but until that time, don't bother, folk. Don't bother. They can actually go and cripple it on you? Oh, yeah, yeah. On the very next upgrade, and you can't stop them. 
Like or I, like I should say update, data, not upgrade, update. Going. Yeah, it, in your case, you're fine, okay? But if you're using Windows 10 and you haven't given them the $120, yeah. okay. Okay. Um, they do have the option of saying, okay, um, forget about the uh, personalization settings. Nothing's going to work, okay? But I can't see that happening. Not after all of the time and effort that they put into making sure millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people got Windows 10 free. But Microsoft is crazy. Um, who knows what's going to happen next? Okay. The next thing we're going to look at, and why did I close that? That was really, really stupid. Um, the next thing we should look at is um, I have been advised by someone who knows here in the class that uh, Windows Live Mail, the local client for Windows Mail, Windows Live Mail, on the local client on your computer will stop working after July the 30th. Do you want to pull my email up so you can read it? No. June 30th. No, I'm just saying. Yeah, June 30th. June 30th. I should. Okay, that's a month away. Uh, I'm told. June or July. Well, June or July, I'm told it will stop working. Um, if you have Windows Live Mail as your only mail client, now you have a problem. If it's going to stop working, you're going to have to install another email client. The one that I recommend is Thunderbird Mail. Is it free? It is free. Thunderbird Mail has been available for Windows since Windows 3.1. It's, it's a very old, rugged program that um, has been upgraded and upgraded and upgraded. They keep working with it all the time. It works, it works, it works. Um, there is pretty much no um, email um, configuration that Thunderbird can't do, uh, especially when you're looking at something like um, uh, an, an address from bell.net Bell's email service is um, um, highly encrypted. Um, Thunderbird usually can query the server uh, with your with your uh, email name and your password, and it just starts working. There's no alternate setups that you have to do. It just starts to work. It's amazing. So we're going to show you how to download and install Thunderbird Mail. Now I've clicked on the download button, the free download, and it wants to know where I'm going to put this. Well, I'm going to put this um, for now. Uh, I, might, I might as well just put it in um, downloads. So you tell it where you want it to hide, and it's going to put it in downloads, Thunderbird setup 45.0. And we'll tell it to save it. And it has um, that quickly um, set Thunderbird into the downloads folder. Now, you can do one, do one or two things. You can click on it right here and it will launch. Or if you want to do it later, you can close out of your web browser. And you can go to, um, go to your PC, your... Uh, your um, your own folder, your personal folder, go to downloads and you can find the Thunderbird setup right there. Okay, you'll find it in downloads if that's where you put it. So now we're going to launch the Thunderbird setup uh, for our computer. It's extracting the files and it will load them on the computer. It takes a second or two. 
you might find it a little slower on a on one of uh, your own computers which will be um, because it's got a spinning hard drive it may take a little longer than than this which has a a uh, okay now it's going to ask you do you want to do this make sure and it will launch the Thunderbird setup give it next you want to do a standard install nothing custom about this and it's going to tell you where it's going to put the stuff so it's going to go into the program files x86 and Mozilla Thunderbird now uh, in that folder will be the profile that you set up for Thunderbird Mail a profile is just simply all of the rules that Thunderbird knows about, that you've told it, on how mail works, or how Thunderbird mail works. You can take, if you ever go to another computer or you have to redo Thunderbird, you save that profile. Just save it in a folder and put it back into Thunder, Thunderbird as, as an alternate profile. Thunderbird starts to work again. It's just that simple. But that's for later, later. Okay, now we'll finish it. And um, we'll see if it's going to launch. I don't think it's going to launch. Oh, there it goes. Did it put an icon on your desktop? It might have. I didn't check to see that. It Did might it have. There's a little check mark in there. What was that for? <laughs> Did you see it? Okay. Uh, in this in this instance, um, it wants to know if you want to set it as default. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this go away after I've done all this, so I'm gonna set it as default right now. Um, now it's gone through uh, my computer and found my name, which is uh, and it's wanting wanting to know if I would like to have an email address from this gandy.net and the answer is no I don't want it skip this and use my existing mail okay so now it's found my name let's put it in here um, but we're going to use um, Sue's address um, because we know it okay well we're going to put your name in uh, so we'll just say Sue yeah. Yes. Okay. And your email name is slang three three zero at quickclick.net. Q U I C K C L I C dot net. Okay. Now we're doing we're doing this. I mean, will I have Will it tell me this is already been done? Would I go home and do this? Or no, no. I, I looked at it. I looked at it. You don't have any mail in your account right now, no. so there's nothing to download. What we're what we're looking at is how easy this is yes. to set up. How easy it is to set up. If um, by the way, if uh, the uh, if source cable um, had um, uh, a setup where everything was encrypted that means it it has to look at different ports besides port number 110 and 25 um, it would probably use um, uh, 995 as a port for uh, for encrypted mail but it's not doing that and I know that for a fact but Thunderbird would find that anyway it would just find it and make it work Okay, so we're going to put your password in. Yeah, and I am not going to tell, have it remember. No. W Y A T T. And continue. Now it's going out looking at its database and it's going to ask you do you want to do this in IMAP or POP3? Uh, source cable is mostly POP3, so that's where we're going to do post office protocol. Number three, okay? It went to IMAP as, um, as, as a suggestion, but you have to know that your, your email is POP3 from source cable. Now, if you were looking at it from Outlook.com, then you would leave it as IMAP. So I would leave it then? Yes. But if you're going to, yeah, 
if you have both and you're setting up both, yeah. remember that if you're getting mail from a service like Gmail, Outlook.com, um, uh, Yahoo, this wants to be IMAP from those mail services. But for, for the private companies like Source and, and uh, Rogers and all of them, they will be doing POP3. See, now I, I don't know if I, like, I don't have a source email address. Mine's just uh, chooch52 at uh, live.com. Okay, then yours will be IMAP because live.com is in fact now outlook.com. Right. So it will go and find the IMAP settings okay. for, for that and just do them. Right. Now, uh, after I finish this, I will make a couple of other provisos that you should do before you do this. But at this point, we're done. Okay? And um, it wants to get it wants to get the encryption certificate for uh, quick click. Let me see if it will get it. If it doesn't get it, then um, we'll, we can just confirm security encryption and it will work, or it should do. Uh, get certificate, uh, buh, 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 yep. Oh well, unable to uh, obtain identification status, so we'll just, we'll just Cancel out of that. It should work. Um, there we go. We just confirmed the security encryption. And now, there you are. There's your Slang 330. Yeah. There's your inbox. There's nothing in it right now. Yeah. It, uh, it's busily downloading messages that you have nothing there. There is your Thunderbird mail working. Will it be my, your uh, classes come into mine and the, as an email and then it's, it, by the link, it's sent to my favorites. Yours all come through my quick click so, uh, slang, uh, you know. Yeah. Will, the, will it be able to continue with, will Thunderbird be happy to let You're going to have to, whatever uh, folders that you had set up yeah. in live mail, mm -hmm. you'll have to set them back up in um, okay. in um, Thunderbird, Thunderbird. Okay. yeah I don't think you can import them. so essentially you're sort of starting over yeah. uh, don't make live mail go away because if you have folders in there you'll you'll lose them you'll lose them they, you can't you you can't bring them over that's the problem you can't bring them over um, Windows live mail has um, has the Microsoft uh, protocol for mail and it's called dot eml okay and that's the Microsoft protocol for mail no other email client uses that Microsoft protocol they all use another one a different one um, a very old one from years gone by um, and so the two are not compatible. They, they can't work together. Uh, it used to be that you, you could import them from, from Outlook Express, but uh, not anymore. Not anymore. Um, and so here we are. Here's your Thunderbird mail. Um, you have an inbox. Um, when you make folders, you're going to make folders under local folders okay so you will uh, make new folders here to replicate what you had the the other thing that you can do is that if you have emails in those folders from windows live mail and you you do this early okay you can email them back to yourself through windows live mail then open up thunderbird mail and download them and install and they will come to Thunderbird mail in that new format. 
Okay. Uh, the, um, so the links will come in properly and all that. So understand what I'm saying here. You go to Windows Live Mail, take an email that you have and forward it to yourself. Close Windows Live Mail. Close it. Make sure it's closed. Then open up Thunderbird Mail and get your mail. And that mail... You that, just take the whole folder of what you got there? No, no, you're, you're, you're pretty much doing them one at a time. Uh, so that's the only way it's going to work. Yeah, so if you have something really important in Windows Live Mail that you need to keep, that's the only way to do it. And if you've got a half a dozen things, eh, okay. If you've got... Keep all your lessons there. And in my documents. Yeah, okay. So I don't lose them. Yeah. Your emails yeah, come in as an email. I, as, uh, because I have a li your link with them, it's sent directly to my favorites in Chrome and Edge. So and then I can delete your email that came in. I can get rid of it. So yeah. It, but it comes in to sort to sue, uh, you know. As yeah. But don't don't forget all all of the videos uh, are on my uh, on my YouTube account. That's right. So. Yeah. The, the email you're getting is just saying, okay, here's the new one. Exactly. And if you click on that link, it takes you to my YouTube account. Right. But also I'm sending you the, the, the uh, link for the entire account. Yeah. Yeah. So all of them are available to you. Yes. Yeah. All right? Right. Okay. So that's okay. not so much of a worry. You, all right. They'll all be there. Okay. Um, okay. So... That's how we're going to do that. Um, was there another question, Fred? I thought about sending them to a pen drive. No, good. No, no. Um, the uh, the problem with that is is that it's it's going to send them in the old format, and they have to be in or they in the uh, in the Microsoft format. They have to be converted to this new format for Thunderbird Mail. Okay. So the only way to do it is to email it to yourself. Get out of Windows Live Mail right away and get that get that email downloaded right. to okay. Thunderbird, okay? Before it has a chance to download back yeah. to Windows Live Mail. Or the other thing that you can do, I suppose, is uh, make sure, uh, go into the settings for Windows Live Mail and tell the server to hang on to the mail for five days. And then it should download it again when you open up Thunderbird Mail. You'll have to fiddle with it for a little bit, but those are the tricks that you can use. Okay, so everybody sort of got that, sort of. Kind of. <laughs> you just have to go do it and try it. Yes, you just have to go do it and try it. Yeah. Um, for the sake of argument here, uh, because I don't like to have your email sitting around on my computers. No, I'm going to, no, I'm going to, uh, um, I'm going to get rid of that. And the place that we do that is where? Losing me completely. Yeah. Without losing everything completely. Um, it should say, um, bum, 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 search messages, new folder, settings. Okay, it'll be under settings. And now I can find this account name, okay, and I can highlight it, do account actions, and it will say remove account. Oh, there we are. Okay, okay. remove account. So. That's how I'm, I'm going to do this right now. And are you sure? Are you sure? It wants to know for sure. And okay, the account's gone. Okay. All right? Yeah. Um, okay. Now, like I said, this works for um, POP3 accounts and IMAP accounts like Gmail, Outlook.com, Yahoo. Just remember that when you're setting it up for those accounts, you set it up as IMAP, and the computer uh, or Thunderbird will look at its installation instructions and say, okay, I understand how to do IMAP for Gmail. 
and it will just do it. And it, for all of the folders that you have already in Outlook or Gmail, they will just simply be replicated in here. Yeah, the live mail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, now, if you want to, um, the other thing that you you may have trouble with um, is your address file. Yeah, but for the others, uh, if you have an address file and it's it's big and you want to keep it. Um, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to export your address book. Okay? That's what you want to do. You want to export your address book. But I'm going to change um, to address book right here right now. And um, I'm going to ask, I'm going to tell it to import, I think. Oh yeah, here we go. Import address book. And now It um, depends on on where your your address book is. But usually, you want to export it out of Windows Live Mail to a place, and then you'll import it back in. So we're just going to say import address book, and we're going to go next. Now it will tell you what formats that it can import. Okay. It can add, import uh, Outlook Express, okay? None of you have that. It can import a text file, and the text file that you want, that you want to have exported your original address book to, is CSV, comma separated value, okay? So when you from Windows Live Mail, when you export your address book, you're going to export it as a CSV. That will give you, um, if um, once that file's done, you can check and see if it's good, uh, because it you can open it um, with LibreOffice. It will open as an Excel spreadsheet. Okay. To tell you, and then you can look, well, I had 21 addresses. If there's 21 lines there, you got them all. If there's only two, you did something wrong. Okay? So if you, if you export as a comma-separated value, you can open that file in LibreOffice or Microsoft Office Excel. Okay? And when you do that, then you can check and see everything's okay. Don't change anything. Just open it and have a peek. <laughs> All right? So we're going to say cancel out of that. Um, so that's how you would do that. So it's not that difficult a task. Um, if this video works out well, you can play it over and over and over again. At this point, it looks like it's going to be about 20 minutes long. So. There we go. Any questions about Thunderbird and Thunderbird Mail? Are we good? Do I have to have Mozilla to be able to put the Thunderbird? Well, it goes to Mozilla, the Mozilla website. Uh, Thunderbird Mail is part of the Mozilla suite. Right. Okay. Of uh, which is Firefox and Firefox and a few other little things. Yeah. But uh, just simply go to Thunderbird Mail and download. It's from the Mozilla suite. Okay. I think I missed something here. Try me. <laughs> Try me. It says import addresses into thumb Thunderbird, right? Yeah, that's what you want to do. And you go to well, you first off you SV? first off you're going to export your your address book from your old export out. Your, from your old email service. You're going to export your address book in CSV. Oh yeah, export it from. From Windows Live Mail. From Windows Live, okay, that's yeah. what I meant. Yeah, okay, so, you, yeah. so you're going to export it. Just put it on your desktop or in a folder somewhere where you know where it's going to be. Yes. And give it a name you can find. And then um, you go to 
um, address book and under tools import okay now uh, just for the just for some giggles here I'm gonna say import and I'm gonna say import mail now it will tell me what kind of mail I can import and all I can import is Outlook Express I told you that right at the beginning of this it will only import Outlook Express. It will not import Outlook. Too bad for us. Okay. So, there we go. Any uh, any more little nagging questions? I guess I have a saved folder with, you know, grandkids pictures and stuff. I mean, in my source email. Yeah. That should be um um, they'll find it'll find it a Thunderbird will find it that saved folder because I noticed it only had no no that's herein lies the problem uh, as I said before um, Windows Live Mail and Thunderbird Mail are not compatible no. in other words the files can't move freely from one to the other so I send that to my send each one of those to myself and download it in Thunderbird Mail yeah. now the other thing that you can do is just remember to keep um, all of the, don't unload yeah. Windows Live Mail. What you want to do is, is when you've got Thunderbird Mail working and you're finished moving stuff out of it through email, just simply go to Windows Live Mail and, um, and delete the account. Or I, I shouldn't say delete the account, uh, delete the settings for the account. Okay, if you delete the account, everything else may go away. Yeah. 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 Uh, except if if you've put them in local folders. Let me. Uh, um, remember when when we had your email up, we had you here slang three thirty. Yeah. Okay, it's not there now, but under local folders. Okay, um, when that um, in in uh, Windows Live Mail, you can do the same thing. You can make a local folder. Okay. And that local folder has nothing to do with, um, with the email account. It's just a local folder. Put all your stuff in local folders. Okay. Then when you delete the account, yes, you're deleting the inbox that everything came in, but you've also got a copy of it in local folders and when you delete the account, it does not, it does not delete local folders. So you can save everything there. Then when you open up Windows Live Mail, it's not going to bother you about, uh, well, I can't find an email server. No, you don't need one. It's just a place to store stuff. All right? Okay. Just a place to store stuff. So if you've got pictures there, you can download the pictures. If you've got links there, you can open the links. Stuff like that. All right, that pretty much beats that up, um, except for <laughs> Outlook.com. Um, iTunes deals with me through Outlook.com. They send yeah. their, their receipts to me, blah, blah, yeah. blah, and everything else. I print them, and um, do I have to tell iTunes I have a new, or? No, no, no it's, it, because it's IMAP yeah. to Outlook.com, yeah. uh, Thunderbird will just Good. load the mail. Okay, so you can work on it locally, yeah. or you can log into Outlook. Whatever you like to do. Yeah. But working on it locally is usually a way easier, especially in Thunderbird. The other question is, when all this happens in the 30th or whatever, and it all dies, live mail and everything else, what if you just said, eh, leave it, just let it sit there for, and, and uh, does it send something to you and say, eh, hey, you cancel I have. This? I have I no idea. Yeah. I have no idea. I mean, I'm I'm the kind of person that say just leave it there and put your new one in, put everything into the new one, but let the others just. Yeah, the ser the the services may just simply stop working, okay. the, on the computer. the The computer works through the services of this program. Yeah. Okay, it may just simply stop working, or it, um, for whatever reason, I have no idea how that's going to work, yeah. but. Uh, uh, until it stops working and I get phone calls. Yeah. <laughs> if I, if this, if telling yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. 
I've always said that in chaos, there is opportunity. <laughs> okay, um, Thunderbird Mail. Um, yeah, by the way, it did put, uh, did put an, an icon up there. That's good, because I like to have my icons on here. I don't like mysteries trying to find stuff. Okay. Um, now, we did Thunderbird Mail. We did, uh, um, what did we do? <laughs> I'm, I'm having another one of those moments. Um, we looked at... Um, Windows 10 is going to stop, yeah. stop being free. There was one other thing we wanted to look at, wasn't there? No, that's, that's, I, I wanted to know about that mail. <laughs> yeah, okay. So we're pretty much done there. Um, that's a, a good little lesson to have for today. So let's talk about, uh, do we have any other kinds of questions? We'll do the, the remainder as Q&A. Settings. I kind of peek in settings sometimes to look, and I, you know, I look to see what updates the Microsoft are putting in. I went into network and internet, and I looked, and you know, Susan's place is secured, and it found my Rogers box secured, and it found my cell phone, which is in the same room, bell yep. secured. With a little thing at the bottom that said hidden network secured. Yeah. What the hell is Just like that. that. You got it. What's a hidden network? <laughs> I don't have hidden things. Yes, you do. Oh, I do? That's yeah. where it's that my fridge is open. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Not secure. Windows, um, Windows 10 um, and Windows 8.1 um, opened up internal networking devices. Okay? And that's why it says hidden network. Remember, a printer is, uh, is a network device. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because okay. other computers can get at your computer to run your printer. Okay? Yes. That's why it's there. Hidden network it's device. Called, that's what it is. Okay. That, I mean, I've never seen it before. Yeah. Who? Who's putting the mic on my say hidden. Mine mm -hmm. says open. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why neither. Because <laughs> you need a new printer. We can get a new no, printer. No, I need a whole new computer. <laughs> I know. Um, okay, thank you for okay is it still crashing? What's uh, on? No, what happened was just that one time when I said it froze. Yeah. And then I got a little thing because I, I forced Okay, it seems to be all right. Close. Good. All right, any other questions? Questions, questions. I'm doing questions right now. Come on, Bill. Ask mine. No. No. Oh. no. Well, you always have questions. <laughs> <laughs> Away and tried to I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, is okay. your TV also a network too? Can it find, sit there and say you're, you know a TV is a part of? TV? If it if it is network enabled, if it can run Netflix. Oh. Okay. Right. So if if uh, Netflix, uh, if you put an Ethernet cable in the back of it, mm -hmm. or it's wireless. It hooks into your wireless router. Okay. Then yes, your TV is a networked item because it can run Netflix or Hulu or all of these other services. If it doesn't have that, it's not networked. Um, I'm just trying to think now. Um, I'm not ready to do my latest rant. My latest rant will be at the end of the month. Is um, it okay that I disabled that little uh, scarlet icon that was due to the graphics, the new update they put in on graphics? I just disabled it. I don't yeah. put it in my face. And no, no, yeah, yeah, you can disable it. I have no idea what graphics is all about. So. If it's working fine, leave it alone. You're yes. not playing games. Yeah. Mine, I just, every day I have to tell it, no, I don't want you. Uh, so, there are there other things that we need to talk about here? Like I said, I'm going to leave my rant till the end of the month. Um, I can't think of anything else. Uh, please, do we have questions? We've got another half an hour to go here. <laughs> 20 minutes anyway. Um, Just go around, visit us. Yeah, 
Yeah. And he chose for 10 minutes to show us yeah. the yeah. 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 so we'll Switch us over. <laughs> Here, Bob, take care of that. <laughs> um, okay, the, the one thing I suppose that for, for those of you that don't have it on a, on a good running computer, um, perhaps it might be time to do this. Um, if you have a simple small problem that, um, or that you're not comfortable looking at yourself or trying to fiddle with it, um, there is a way that I can log into your computer at home from my, de from my office. Okay. Uh, if we want to look at that, I suppose we could look at that as an option and because it's going to be on the video, maybe uh, some of the others might want to think about it for themselves. Um, and so I'm just going to run quickly through this um, because I have this on, on my office machine and I can, with this program, go to your house from my office and log into your computer and have a look and see for something small, something quick. Um, the the um, program that I'm talking about is called TeamViewer. TeamViewer. Come on. Oops. Why did you stop working? There it goes. It's a remote support program that uh, guys like me can use to help guys like you. So I'm going to quickly download TeamViewer, and this is the way you will do it too. Uh, I'm going to put it in downloads, and so we'll save it. And it's in downloads now. Nope, it's still working away at it. Come on. All right, there's Team Viewer already in there. I don't know why it's doing that. Anyway, we'll just make sure it's going to go here. Oh, come on, come on, come on. It messed up right in the middle of it. Try it one more time. There it goes. I don't know why the first the, in the first instance it okay, there it goes. Now it wants to uh, do do an installation. All right, so we're going to do the basic installation. Okay, no tricks, no tabs, no funny business about this. It's just the basic installation. And we're going to, um, the other thing we're going to do is how do you want to use TeamViewer? Do you want to do it for commercial use? Because if you do, you give them money. But this is free. Free for personal non-commercial use. And that's what you check. Okay. And we accept and we finish this. And it wants to know, are you sure you want to load this? And it's installing TeamViewer now. Oh, 
Okay. There we go. There's our team viewer icon right there. It's uh, going to, it's just cleaning up its install. Now, um, here is the team viewer panel. If you need me to log into your computer, you will open team viewer here. So let's just simply do that. Okay. Get out of that. It's going to bug you about stuff it wants to do. But here's team viewer. So you will open it. Okay. And when you do, you will pre be presented with this nine digit number. That's yours. It will never change as long as you have team viewer installed on this computer. It will never change. It's yours. It's red. That number is registered to a server in Ireland. Okay. The neat thing about TeamViewer is even if someone was to get this nine digit number, every time you open TeamViewer, the password changes. Okay. So if you close it and open it again, that four digit number will be different. So yeah. All right. Somebody's, for some reason or other, got your nine-digit code, but it's no good to them because the password's going to change every time. All right, so uh, you're on the phone with me, and I will ask you for this nine-digit number. And I'll put it in, and I'll ask you for your password, and I'll put it in my machine, and I will hit connect to partner, and do da do da my computer will look exactly like yours. Whatever you've done, I'll see. <laughs> and, and whatever icons you have, I can activate. And uh, I, can, um, I can open up Notepad and I can put a note on your desktop. OK? Here's the question. If Fred puts that in his computer, can you find out how he does his phone? Um, it would be a little difficult to do because I, I will not be able to see what he's seeing. Okay. All right, as far as the phone goes. Okay. So I would have to be able to see both, and I can't see both. I can't see what's on the phone. But uh, this is for just exactly that reason. If you want to talk to me and you're saying, I'm having this problem, that problem, the other problem, um, it's really difficult for me because I can't see what you're seeing. Now I can. Now I can see what you're seeing. And I can, um, with, with my mouse and keyboard, I can take over your computer completely. My mouse and keyboard becomes your mouse and keyboard. Don't like that. Except for one thing. <laughs> Control-Alt-Delete doesn't work very well. So. Yeah, um, I can I can go down here to the taskbar and I can right click, and I can get the task manager from there. But Control Alt Delete in Windows uh, Seven and uh, is is basically uh, the better way to get to Task Manager if you're locked up. So you have to be there to do a Control Alt Delete for me. <laughs> nobody else can do that without that password. No, nobody can get in without that password. Well, it's, safe that it's safe that way. Exactly so. And besides which, um, once you close TeamViewer, there's no way for somebody to remotely open it unless they have remote access. And why would they use TeamViewer for remote access when they already have it? <laughs> okay. So there's a little program uh, for everybody to uh, install on their computer if, if you want me to be able to log into your computer to do a quick little look or a quick little fix or something like that uh, and quickly install a program for you or delete a program or whatever um, that can be done um, I think any other questions about team viewer no that number you're giving you're giving it on the phone or are you giving it on the computer? You're telling yeah. all the numbers. On yeah, you're, you're telling, see, this is your number. Yeah, 
when you open TeamViewer, you see this number here. You give that to me. By phone? By phone. Okay. And then the password by phone. And um, if I was logging in to your computer, I would put your number in here, partner ID. All right? That's where I put your number in. And then I can log in. But this is the number you give me. And it's just when you, because it's free, it's going to nag you about buying stuff. But that's easy to ignore. Um, okay, I think we've pretty much beaten this to death. We've got about uh, five or ten minutes. Uh, any other issues, questions that uh, you might have? Thinking about, thinking about. Um, you had a problem a couple of weeks ago. What was it? Can't remember now? I guess it's not a problem anymore. It's probably not a problem anymore. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, I guess we're going to cut this off a little short because I can't think of anything else to do for us. So with that... Thanks so much for coming, and I'll get this off as quickly as I can if the sound didn't mess up. <laughs> Seemed to be all right, right? Right. Okay. Thanks a lot. That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.